their keys, Halatau. He's inside the 10, he goes to second man, Marshall. Quick hands, they're over again. They're in again, the Tigers. And I think it might be Halatau, it is. Dean Halatau's got his second try. Tell me why you decided to get involved with the State of Mind campaign. It's a pretty important issue in the game, and, and I've been around for a while, so. Uh, I've seen a lot of players go through some, some fairly low lows and, and I guess becoming an ambassador um, gives me a chance to sort of uh, identify when guys might be going through periods where they might be suffering from a mental illness and, and also to, to be a, an ear or a hand if, if they need some help from, from somebody. I, I guess you naturally become a senior player or a leader within, within every club you're at um, and, and something that I've, I've kind of um, gotten used to. I was always someone that was pretty quiet around, around the team and um, I'd only say something if I had to, um, but uh, as, as I've gotten older and matured, I, I guess um, I've, I've tried to have a bit more input in and take on you know, those, those roles of being a senior player. You get a good feel for the way people are around training um, day in day out because we spend so much time together. We understand each other's personalities and, and, and when there is a change in, in someone's personality it's fairly noticeable and it's noticeable by more than one, one or two people. It, it starts to become a thing where um, the group will, will see that a player is maybe not acting the same way so those changes in behaviours uh, I guess are a fairly good indication of uh, maybe that there's something that's you know, not quite right and, and they might be struggling with something. Guys that are, that are withdrawn and, and not participating as they normally would. Um, in, in team activities, or training, or even going out for lunches, or going to the movies, whatever, whatever it might be that, that the guys organise. Um, and, and you know, if, if they're having uh, relationship breakdowns, things like that that you, that you can see, um, and, and that, are, that are fairly public, maybe, um, then you know, there's things like that, that that are triggers, and also form form slumps. You know, guys that are going through form slumps, that, that might be an indicator that uh, there's, there's other things that aren't that aren't quite right, not just at football, but off the field as well. And a boy. When I was younger, I'd always go to senior players for advice about football. Um, I'd always ask them you know, what I need to be doing to improve my game. And, and I guess um, now, uh, being a senior player, I'll, I'll be open to helping them with football, but also um, you know, I might just ask, ask question, general sort of questions about about their own lives and how things are going and, and um, if, if there's any way that you, know, you, can, you can offer some sort of advice being, being a guy that's been around for a while uh, that they might be able to help them. It's coming to him, he sets himself, back it comes to Mbai, he hits it towards the post, it's just over the bar, it's a goal, Moses Mbai has won the game in golden point extra time. If, if you lose a game you, you, feel, you feel pretty ordinary when you lose a football game and, um, it, the boys, the boys always talk about the roller coaster of rugby league. The how um, when the team's going well, you're at the top of the roller coaster. But when you're struggling to put a win, put a win on the board and, and you're at the bottom, obviously you're going the bottom of the roller coaster. But for individuals, it's also their performance, whether or not they're in, in the team, whether or not they're, they're getting an injury, and uh, if they're off contract, the pressures of, of trying to play for another contract. There might be uh, some media, some media scrutiny over the way they're, they're playing. You know, they might have a, a form slump. Uh, rugby league is an environment where there's all these sorts of triggers for, for mental health issues. And um, being around for a while, I've seen players go through those times. I've, I've been through periods myself where, myself where I've been injured, uh, I've been off contract, and, and I've felt those pressures of, of having to perform and, and, and be up every week for a game and, and trying to you know, make the most of my football career. And um, you know, a lot of players will put all their eggs in the football basket and. And I think that's the be-all and end-all. And, and if they do that, then they're, you know, I guess, at higher risk of, of, of having these, these lows and feeling very low when things aren't going quite to plan. Males are typically fairly stoic people or try to at least try and appear that way. And, and with football players, it, it might be even more so because we play a game where we, we go out in the field and we, we tackle each other fairly hard and we try to run the ball as hard as we can. So we, we maybe want to appear even, even tougher than, than the general guy in the public, so um, it's definitely, it is hard to communicate um, feelings and, and to open up and to talk to people about these sorts of things. And the amount of younger guys that are in the game now, it's, it's a fairly, um, I think the average age has probably come down in the NRL and, and by exposing the younger guys to these sorts of, training, these sorts of uh, programs and uh, the, the mental health first aid course, I think it will help them, uh, as I said before, reflect on themselves and, and also you know, create sort of a, um, 
an environment where they can talk to each other a bit more openly about these sorts of things and, and um, you know, it, it'll help reduce that stigma again. People in the community, you know, fans and, and members of clubs can see that um, you know, football players that do suffer from mental illnesses, they can um, come out and, and talk about these sorts of things and if they're going through some problems themselves then maybe it's something that they can do. Uh, you know, seeing, seeing one of their favourite players um, that might be going through something that they you know, have kept inside and, and are going through themselves might encourage them to seek the help that they need. So um, I think it's a great, a great thing that the NRL are doing to, to create this awareness and, and help break down their stigma so that I'm not just the players can seek help, but, but those that fly the game, they might be encouraged to do the same.